Hey, thanks for joining me on Do More. Now, Do More is a channel on YouTube and on social media where I try to uh, impart some advice to the people that I talk to uh, to retire early, to be their own boss, and to be the best that they can be. So today I talked to this guy called Alan Wu, and Alan Wu is the Chief Innovation Officer for Afen Huang Investment in KL Malaysia. And he, to me, is someone who's really figured it out because he is, to me, redefining what happiness means. He, to me, is redefining what wealth really means. And uh, he's one of those guys that wants to retire, not with a bungalow with a, with a Mercedes, but he wants to retire with a boat. So if you like the show, uh, share it, like it, uh, tell your friends about it, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks. <laughs>Sometimes on Do More, we talk to quite famous people, quite um, high-level people, Dato Tan Sri, all these things. And then sometimes we talk to people like you, right? And okay. Rizal Khalif, a.k.a. Abang Pola. Right. And I think the whole idea is to, to basically tell the young guy that uh, the kind of lifestyle that you have been leading the last I don't know, number of years is accessible to everybody. It just takes a certain mindset mm. and a certain approach and a certain discipline. Okay, but before we get into all that, right? Alan Wu, the Wookiee, who are you and where do you come from? Okay, uh, first I came here for the whiskey, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn Lieber. <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, I was a uh, Kwantan boy, born and bred. Uh, then as soon as I finished my Form 5, moved to KL, uh, started studying uh, for, for finance and, and IT, and then that's, that's where I found my niche, basically. Um, yeah, now I'm in the uh, investment industry. So, so yeah, so you're also the Chief Innovation Officer at uh, Afin Huang. Mm, that's right. Uh, of which we've had Deng Jiwai come through here as well, talk about ah, investment. Man, sure. Um, your old friend, your ex, uh, well, your colleague now. Yeah. In fact, your boss. Yeah, my boss. <laughs> so you studied together in London, right? No, uh, we stayed together in, in the same hostel in London. So we yeah. studied obviously different things. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. he was doing actuary at the time. Yeah. Okay, and you're a finance IT guy. Yeah. Okay, so your background is interesting, right? Because yeah. um, I think you've told me before, uh, that your dad was um, a surveyor. So yeah. you spent a lot of time in the jungle. Yeah. So maybe that's where you got some of your outdoor roots from? I think so, yeah. Yeah, and so yeah, he used to come back with all these, you know, those times you have those canvas rucksacks and all that. And we were just curious what's in there and all these gears and all that. I think that piqued my interest, really, yeah. And then your mum is in. Um my mom. Mom the, <laughs> your mom is uh, the Malaysian James Bond. <laughs> not quite, not quite, not out in the field, but uh, more like the the analyst, right? So she she works for Special Branch, and uh, I actually do not know what she do. Obviously, secrecy and all that. Uh, but she till today, you don't know what she does. No, no, she never told. Yeah. Not the not the family. I doubt my dad even though so. But um, yeah, at that time, because of the you know during those days of the communist era, so they they needed somebody who can read and write Chinese and interpret some of these things, I guess. So intelligence, basically. Yeah. So I am a parent like you. Uh, mm. And I'm, you know, the whole study and the whole field of parenthood is actually very complex and very um, mm. um, c complicating for me because you want to bring up a child that is yeah. best prepared for the future. You want to have a child that is also best um, equipped to deal with all the challenges. And today, the challenges are huge, right? And then today, you've also got the complication of the devices, the internet, the World Wide Web, and too many kids spending too much time on their device. And I'm a I'm big uh, 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 opponent of that because I want them to be out there exploring the outdoors, having fun in the jungle, um, getting themselves dirty, having a real life in the real world, not in the virtual world. But with you guys, with you especially, right, because your parents are out there, but you also ended up quite high up in the professional world because I think you're Chief Innovation Officer right. at Afin Huang. So you've done well professionally and you're also quite uh, accomplished personally, in, in my opinion, because you're not one of those fat, overweight guys <laughs> in the proper world, stressed out on the verge of a heart attack or stroke. You know what I mean, right? <laughs> so to me, you're, you've kind of like figured it out. You've sussed it out. Yeah. Was, so. it, was it your parents' input or was it your own kind of like... I, I uh, think... Coming to that conclusion... Yeah, it's, it's hard to just pinpoint it in, in, a, in a single nutshell. I think uh, it's, it's the things that you gather as you journey. I think uh, 
uh, having travel uh, overseas, having studied uh, overseas is part of it. Seeing seeing different lifestyle, and and I don't think that itself is should be a limiting factor to anyone saying, oh, I haven't been overseas, so I wouldn't know. You know, in today's world, we all connected. We've seen TVs, uh, you know, online videos and all that. So that's that's not an excuse, but I think the curiosity, basically, I think you have to have a curious mind. To, to then start to pick up all these things and then start to start think that look there's just a bigger world out there you know I I want to see it uh, you, was that a curiosity that your parents put in you or was it a I, I born with it probably I would think that you know uh, because you know my, my dad being a surveyor goes to the jungle uh, often. and did he talk to you a lot did he say hey, you know I'm going to do this I'm going to do that I discovered yeah, this insect uh, I discovered that beetle no, not really you know parents those days right they don't talk about they don't talk a lot they, yeah they don't talk a lot so it's, yeah my it, dad was like that he never tells me anything he just yeah, does right? yeah, yeah. so you, you pick it up from there so you I think uh, children then probably probably more adept at picking up all these nuances from your parents you know oh yeah my, my dad has this this interest outdoors he carries this gear and, and sometimes he may tell you why he, he strapped his parang this way, you know, that kind of thing. So you pick up all these small nuances. Why does my dad look like Indiana <laughs> Jones? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, the Malaysian. But, at that, you know, it's, it's all these nuances that you pick up uh, uh, growing up among parents who are like that. Um, and also along the way, your journey, right? You, you're curious, you, you want to find out more. And, and I think the... That itself kind of formed the company that you keep because you you then wanted to be a, be with like minded people. You then wanted to say, hey, you know, you it happens like this, right? You probably have a bicycle and you say, hey, let's cycle to this place, and you just ride, you know, not thinking about anything. And and yeah. if you have a friend along, whoa, that's like party, man. So <laughs> yeah. Did, did how much or how much not did your parents talk to you about you know studying hard or doing well in school or were they not the kind oh every asian parent My yeah God. were they tiger yeah, parents yeah they 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 weren't so much uh i wouldn't say by today's standards they're tiger parents uh but uh certainly a report card is a big big uh, uh event at home uh you know uh, parent my parents do scrutinize the report card uh and then often get uh, spanking from it, I think, if I remember correctly. So, yeah. yeah I, remember, <laughs> I remember mine very clearly. Man. Shout out from memory. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I think uh, basically every Asian parent, I think uh, that's why to today I, I kind of resent that. There's a little bit of rebellion in that. And then. Well, because, and because they. They, they, they the spank me, yeah. They, they spank me for, for. And I wasn't a bad student. Uh, the point being like this, right? I was generally last in the class from standard one to standard five. Oh, okay so you were last in the class i was last in my class this is why i just couldn't do the, the test papers right okay so then came the standard five at the time was a standard five uh penilayan, right they call it uh, i don't know what they call it now but standard five and i was among the nine people in my school that scored five a's and like total what? shock to everybody right so it's like who is this guy right so uh, yeah, really, even my dad okay. didn't believe it. So Okay, I, this is interesting for me personally. Because <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. my kid now, my boy, uh, he's in Center 5. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I don't expect him to get 9 days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but he's, 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 he's in Chinese school. So he, he doesn't necessarily, he's not necessarily getting better. He's always been kind of in the middle. And then he's trending downwards, like, you know. So he's apparently got a little bit worried. Hmm. So then all of us, are, you know, the wife and I are hoping there'll be a, like a turnaround, mm, right? Mm. Whether it's an enlightenment or whether he, 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 he realizes something himself. What happened with you? I had, I think at that time, uh, maybe a very good memory. I, I had good recollection. I, I never went for tuition, never studied anything. But somehow for that standard five exam, I had good recollection basically I, I just managed to recollect what I've learned uh, so it was an understanding was recollection it was more recollection I have zero understanding dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah those things are all about um, yeah, memory, yeah, right? yeah 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 zero understanding <laughs> I mean I'm just from a not to not to this the school in Guangdong but it was bad right those times schools in a small town you know <laughs> so I had you're not gonna get PhD teachers right <laughs> yeah so 
That was bad, but yeah, somehow I had that recollection <laughs> I managed to answer those damn questions. So yeah, I didn't expect to, to perform that well. I was like, I uh, didn't even went to collect my results. My dad somehow went and he was totally shocked. So yeah. So <laughs> your memory about being quite hurt about being spanked, mm -hmm. I mean, being cane is a normality among Asian parents, That's right? true, yeah. That's true, right? Um, and most Asian parents would say, you cannot rotan lah, right? If you don't do it, you you see a cane. Yeah. Do you did you, did you not pursue that policy with your own children? Mm, I think I did in the beginning years, like maybe the first child. Then I realized, look, I'm not gonna repeat what my parents did to me, right? So okay. that was a conscious uh, switch after that. So I think uh, that's why my elders would say she got it the uh, hardest, and then the younger ones is like, "Hey, you guys got it easy, <laughs> that kind of thing." Okay. Yeah, because you are probably late forties, early fifties now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. and a bit like Yusuf, right? Yusuf, he his job is Yusuf Hashim, right? Yeah, yeah, who, yeah. Who we, we met, yeah, know, okay? yeah. And he's kind of a bit of a become a bit of a legend, right? Yeah. Um, his job was all done by age of 53. Yeah. Done and dusted, right? Sure. First child at 23, last child at 27, yeah. 53 years old, done, finished, yeah. right? Yeah. Is that the same with you? Uh, I got married very young. I basically got my first kid when I was 27. Okay. Yeah, so. That's young for Chinese. Yeah, yeah, that's young. Because I did have that mentality that let's get it done and dusted. Okay, so you had a similar mentality with <laughs> yeah, yourself. Yeah. yeah. A, bit, a, bit, a bit later, but, yeah, but nonetheless. Yeah. 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 Yeah, considering the cultural difference. Correct, correct. Because <laughs> Chinese, they love to work, and earn some money, save up some yeah, cash. Your in-laws wouldn't allow you to marry without a career, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so do you advocate getting married early? I don't know, but I advocate uh, planning. I advocate that, you know, you have to... Um, if, you, if you're the type that think that I want to start a family, why not plan it properly, start it, and get it done with so that... If you want, if you want something more in your life, if you want to, then like you put it, personal development. If you want to see the world, not so much see the world. If you want to actually broaden, you know your your horizon in the sense that you seeing things that you have not seen before, experience things that you've not experienced. Before. I guess. Did you have that in mind when you're twenty five, twenty six? As in, you wanted to get your job done and and. I I do. In fact, uh, I started a brief career, then I basically quit my job took the VSS and tried to be an entrepreneur. Uh, and, and I do tell this to my staff and, and, and friends, younger friends that at least once in your life, try to be an entrepreneur because the lesson is invaluable, really. Yeah. 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 What are the lessons? Oh, striking out on your own, you know, the fear, how you conquer it, trying to build it with all you have. It, there's nothing like everything at stake when you're doing your own business. What did you try and do? Those days, I don't know if you recall, those days there were people who's doing uh, SMS messaging contests and all that apps that center around SMS. So I, I teamed up with another person and we started writing programs for this kind of thing, like contests. Because you're an IT guy, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> QR codes and through the SMS and all that. And and uh, yeah, basically those, those kind of things. Uh, Ultimately, sold it off. Uh, it wasn't that profitable anyway because those days you get paid in six months by the telco. Okay, that's no good. <laughs> that's really <laughs> that's bad. <not> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the drag was crazy. How uh, old were you then? Were you already married and children? Uh, I was married. Uh, I was like 32, 33. So with children already? With couple, yeah. So that's a big deal. Yeah, That's a very big deal. I've got a few friends now in the early 30s and I said, look, before you get married, before you have children, before you get the mortgage, whatever you want to do, just do it now because you've ne you'll never have as low a risk profile as you have now. That's, that's, that's the thing I learned, you know, from, from my activities outdoors and all that, right? I think the, the biggest thing that most people have is the fear itself. It's not the actual doing. I mean, once you jump into it, you, you, you know, you, you're you, in it already. Yeah, you're in it. It's, it's, the fear is it's not as bad as what you think. It's the... It's stepping into it that's, that's the most fearful and it's all in your mind really yeah. I mean you go out climbing right the fear of falling is huge it's huge but that's to you if I if I climb the same route as another guy right and, and the beginner was like I can't move I'm just I just can't and that's the fear of falling paralysis 
literally. Yeah, and the more senior you get in the organization, the higher your salary, yeah. the more your perks and privileges, yeah. the harder it is to leave your job. Unless you think that, look, if I step beyond this and I say that, look, yeah, it's nice, but do I really fear it so much that I can't walk away? You have to answer that. I yeah. asked Abang Bola this last week, yeah. well, the last time we met, yeah. and he said his policy in life is to never get into a job or anything which he can't walk, walk away, away from, just like that. Perfect. Yeah, it's I, the same I, as Robert De Niro in yeah. Heat. He said the same thing. Yeah, I, I have the same belief. Yeah. You should never be able to, to get tied down just because of the perks. You have to have a certain passion for it. Right? You, you do this because, not to say you don't want the perks, obviously it's good, yeah. but you know, that shouldn't be the stopping factor in case it doesn't work out. So the reason, I guess, why we're talking today, Alan, mm -hmm. the Wookiee, is because of your outdoor pursuits, right? Yeah. And your name was given to me by a couple of people, uh, Zul at um, OCBC, his yeah, wife, Ina. Yeah, Zul. Yeah. They, they talk very highly of you, and uh, I mean, even Zul himself is doing this amazing thing, yeah. right? And even Ina herself. Yep. Um, so so you, you, you're a four-wheel drive guy, you're an out, you're, you're a mountain guy. What was your, couple of your most memorable outdoor pursuits? Uh... You would probably put it as my misadventures, I would think. <laughs> but but more more at miss than yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, in in the midst of uh, having an adventure, there's there's the miss. <laughs> so, but that's what it's all about, right? Yeah, that's I I think so. I can relate. You know, uh, maybe one. Let's start with this one, right? So I was climbing in in during that time. We still climbed this place, uh, a rock wall in in Batu Caves called the Nanyang, right? And the Nanyang, there's there's a place called. Uh, there's a wall called volleyball because simply because the 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 boat between one to another is so damn long that you know you gotta jump uh, you, you don't have to jump but it's it's always very risky because to clip on here and then to move the next clip is like pretty three or four moves before you get there and you, you're like you know oh, are shit, you belayed right? are you are you support you are yeah 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 I, I'm being belayed right so yeah. you know it's like damn you know <laughs> <laughs> so it's called volleyball because. The guy who bolted it obviously is Mat Saleh and it's like, you know, so bloody tall, right? So, <laughs> so, so, yeah, so that was the scary part. And, and that was the day, right? This, um, this friend of mine, so he was stuck. He was stuck there and, and you know, he, he was coming down and he was just stuck. Couldn't, couldn't do anything. The, uh, just ha because it's an old hang, he was just hanging off there. And, and he couldn't get back to the wall and neither could he literally get down because he was... His, his, all his gears so he was are, off the rock he was off already. the rock he fell basically and he was just hanging there right so we were thinking how do we get it down and after a long day it's like probably an hour there going back and forth trying all sorts of things so he was just trying to pendulum yeah, back yeah, right? yeah yeah so we tried swinging it didn't work and then suddenly you thought how, how, how high up was he? Uh, probably 15 meters okay. not, not that high feet? Okay. yeah yeah okay. about there and, and high enough to die high enough to die on, on, a, on a limestone wall um, and I thought Gee, what do you think? Take off your shoe, you know, uh, take off the shoelace, tie it to your shoe, loop it around, throw it to the tree, and hopefully you get it and just pull yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of thing, you know, I, I, I enjoy these kind of moments because... You it, must be a sadist. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And then I, I shared this experience as well. Uh, I was hiking in, in Pampa, Texas, in one of the canyons. And in Texas? Yeah, in Texas, okay. right? Okay. So they had this canyon, uh, this small town called Pamper, Pamper, and there was this canyon. So I had this brilliant idea. Oh, it's a five mile hike. I can make it back. Uh, no need to worry too much of water. I got water in my car. And it was so hot. I couldn't finish it, but I want to finish it. And I came back with my tongue swollen. And it was like, gosh, Whoa. it was so, <laughs> so dehydrated. So Did you stupid. see that movie with, um, what's his name, 100, 127 Hours? Yes, yes, yes. Right, everybody's seen that, right? Yes, that stupidity the, like that, yeah. You don't, you don't go solo, man, ever. Yeah, I and know. And you never not tell anyone where you're going. Yeah, so, but, yeah, you, you learn through that, so. <laughs> yeah. So what else has been outstanding for you? You've been climbing, you've been um, uh, hiking. I, when I was doing the, the ABC, uh, so, base camp? yeah, okay. yeah, and one of the, just to add on to that, stupid adventure thing we just two of me and my friend and another guy so the guy was taking us around and we, we thought hey you know we noticed a guy was just eating dal really watery dal and rice every yeah. day so we said yeah let's be like him hero you know just, <laughs> just <laughs> <eat it. laughs> yeah. we suffer through a journey <laughs> the runs and everything yeah it gotta be a runs you know we were hungry perpetually <laughs> you know so but the guy turns out appreciates so much 
that he invited us back to his flat, right, where yeah. we were in Kathmandu. So he said, I don't know, I'm going to cook for you chicken tonight. And yeah. that's a big deal for them. a big deal for them. It's a big deal for them. So we went back to his flat. There was a little kerosene stove. He was cooking it. He was already cooked, so he was warming it up. And then he took from underneath his bed this chopping board with dust and everything. He was starting, started to cut all these uh, cucumbers and vegetables. And we were like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so and no choice but we ate it and uh, okay pray that we didn't <laughs> get the rust and all that yeah but so was it, how memorable was that because I, I'm actually doing uh, a- ABC later this year yeah okay? yeah I'm doing a 7 day track okay yeah um, but I, I, I understand it's quite a simple um, it, it is it is it is, it's, right? it's a high and then we we purposely didn't want porters so we carry like okay uh, it's yourself yeah 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 okay. we carry like 15 kilos that's a lot yeah yeah but yeah, yeah I, I think the hard part is just uh, uh, trying not to get into the village uh, or rather the tea house too late because there's no more hot water. So okay. <laughs> because a lot of places are just solar yeah. and the first hikers go in, they take their shower and then that's it, right? So okay, if you get so into it, yeah, yeah, you'll be going in freaking cold water. <laughs> <laughs> Would you consider doing EBC, Everest Base Camp or even uh, like summits? I, I think depending on what you want. If you want uh, the name, yeah, EBC is obviously, you know, uh, uh, ABC Everest and all that. But it is a, a tougher hike, not so scenic. ABC is, is a lot more scenic. So there, there are people who have done EBCs, they've done both. Uh, but at the time, me, my, me and my friend, uh, sorry, my friend and I was just saying, yeah, let's just do ABC, it's more scenic. It's, yeah. Yeah. Tragically, uh, uh, a former colleague of my wife um, tried to do EBC earlier this year. And she had a bad case of altitude sickness. Ah, and hip. didn't didn't make it. Yeah. Didn't make it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's a big risk. And I think that's some, something that not many people realize when they yeah. do these things. They sign up for these like marquee events yeah. and they can say, Oh, I've done that and it's one of my oh, bucket list things. Even even uh, uh, experienced hikers get the hip and all that altitude right. sickness. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I have a friend who is guiding uh, locally here to Kinabalu and all that. When he did EPC, he has to come down. But him being being knowledgeable in that, he, he realized that his headache is not going to risk it. So he came down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So how did you do it? Because you you were married early. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got four children. Yeah. Okay. I, I presume you're still in, in fatherhood mode, right? Yeah. So for most people, like, what's it, 99.9% of yeah. people, unless you're born rich. Lah, um, <laughs> not me though. So. Yeah, not, not, <laughs> us, not us. Okay? How do you do it? Yeah. It, let me give you a, a typical... Uh, 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 scenario right so a lot of people say yeah baby comes can't do anything but when I have my kid this is what I do right so I like to cycle so uh, cycling is an early morning event thing so go a bit earlier before the kids and the wife wake up just go do your two hours uh, if you want Where to run you you make sure it's within two hours so it yeah. can be anywhere yeah. uh, Kiara the jungle but make sure it's within two hours okay so you're more of an off-road guy uh, I, I do both I do both okay, yeah okay. yeah. but okay. if you can't do long road rides do a short do an yeah do an off road one right have you seen that um, quite well, it's, it's gone viral now right Mark Wahlberg mm-hmm. um, you know the actor he's manic but he's, but he's also got kids he's about our age right so he wakes up at 2.30 in the morning yeah, and this yeah. is two hours it's quite enough about that it's crazy right <laughs> yeah. mad guy mad guy yeah. he's done by 4.35 he has a shower 6 o'clock he's done he's gonna make breakfast for his kids send them to school Come back home, have a bit of a nap, do some work. Then he's in bed by I think like four thirty or something, exactly. five thirty or something. Because you, this you, discipline, man. That's that's just time management to me. I mean, you can forego that Netflix, basically. You can. You can. You can. Right. If yeah. if you if you think that I got no time, but hey, think about it. You can forego that Netflix, sip a couple hours early, wake up early, and you can be with friends hitting the trails the next morning. Why not? Yeah, because you're still working, right? You're yeah. Still, and you're putting on sea level hours, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, you can. It's it's a it's the mindset that stops us most of the time. It's it's a bit like fear, right? Fear yeah. is the thing that happens in our mind that stops us. And this thing is is the same. Is it also discipline? Because a lot of people I know I, I would are never consider myself a very disciplined person. Uh, I don't think it's so much discipline because it doesn't happen like, you know, uh, uh, every day like that for me or every weekend like this. I if it didn't happen, hey, screw okay. it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Life goes on. So, 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 so this year, what, what have you been your achievements? So this year, uh, achievements of achievements. Not really. This year, basically, 
um, what we want to do is to see places that uh, uh, that are a bit out of where the normal crowd is. So we go into waterfalls that rarely people visit. I got a WhatsApp from you earlier this year. You found this bay. Yep. The right? Blue Hole. Right? The Blue Hole, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. How do you know about that one? So, okay, this so Blue Hole is where? Blue Hole is off Lahat Datu in Sabah. Sabah. Yeah, okay. yeah. So basically, uh, because the diving there is kind of off the beaten track, yeah. really, uh, the, the only dive operator there it's uh, basically in a kampong and he doesn't have facilities. If you want to take a shower, it's, it's rainwater from a big uh, tank. That's cool. Yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. Yeah, it's that's totally cool, cool with yeah, me, right? Totally cool. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but to a lot of people, they, they expect resort thingy and, and oh, that, screw that. Yeah, man. that's yeah. screw them, right? So it was quite undiscovered. In fact, that guy uh, uh, has been in the Sabah papers quite a bit because he was the guy that found it. Okay. And, and, and what he did was that, you know, uh, to people know him and all that, he'd been bringing people to see that place. So one day, uh, our main land newspaper, Straight Times, I believe, pick up on that story. And I think you sent it to me. Yeah, 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 and published it. And I was like, gee whiz, okay, I got to see this before the, the, the horde of tourists goes, right? So that's why, yeah, you may just uh, pick up with a few friends and say, are you free to go? Yeah, anyone? Yeah, well, okay, let's go. Yeah. So what was it like? Um, it was amazing. Uh, if you dive before, you know that the uh, Stackhorn corals right those those uh they're normally about probably a meter meter and a half high this one goes all the way like 10 feet high Whoa. so it was like wow what 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 depths are you diving at uh we were maxed out at 40 but it goes a 40 bit 40 feet 40 meters or oh, 40 meters uh, yeah yeah so you're you're not open water you're much more than that i i'm the dive master okay yeah okay so we were at 40 meters uh and we maxed out there and basically it can still go a bit more so the the whole coral structure that actually is is it's a the whole blue hole so to speak is actually a, a sunken reef. So imagine that the reef was growing so high and then suddenly in the middle the whole structure collapsed, right? So it okay. became a ring. Oh I see, I yeah. because I saw in the pictures you yeah, 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 yeah. So it was like that. Um the crazy part was Is that it a live live about? Uh no no we So you come in and out. Come back in and out. So he, he doesn't even have a speedboat, right? So we rented a, a fishing boat, literally. And it was just chugging along. <laughs> 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 Took us an hour to get to the dive side. <laughs> yeah. But the, the funny thing is that, right? Uh, it's such a beautiful site, but there's lacking of fish. Because okay, that's interesting. Because not for good reason. Not for good reason, because while we were diving, a couple of explosions so close that it literally shook us. We oh, felt the explosions. Yeah, people are fish bombing. Are you kidding? Wait, no, I'm serious. Oh. Twice it was like just okay, hovering you want to take picture, then boom! Oh shit. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah man, so, no shit. So, so what about policing and enforcing that part of the world? <laughs> it's you know, Lahada too, it's remote. There was nobody there basically. When we were there we were the only boat there. Basically so my, my, my friend flew up a drone and you know, purposely parked the boat in the middle of the blue and we were the only boat. Shit, for miles, yeah. It's quite cool in that sense. Nobody yeah, diving, yeah, but, but no fish is no, not good. Not no good. fish is no good, yeah. So the other thing about going to La that to are the pirates, and much has been made about the pirates from the Philippines, and mm. no issue? I've, you know... Not touch wood. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think so. I think uh, there's probably more backstory to, to those kidnappings, I think. Or I like to think. Yeah. <laughs> or otherwise, it will be another misadventure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that I might leave to tell. <laughs> no, no, but... You know, even those uh, days when kidnappings were happening, um, I went with my kids to Pom Pom Island, where, you know, yeah. just it's a next resort, uh, there was a uh, kidnapping and uh, the famous uh, kidnapping and, and of the man and woman. And yeah. yeah. So, yeah, literally, I, I've been going back and forth to Pom Pom Island, to Sabah for, for many years. So your youngest child is how old? Uh, 16. Okay, that's a good age. Yeah, okay. yeah. And your so, eldest? Uh, 24. That's a good age. Yeah. So they, they, all, all of them are into the outdoor pursuits? Yeah, all of them, yeah. They climb, yeah. They, they dive, yeah, they cycle. How old were your kids when you first let them do uh, their certification for diving? Uh, probably varies between the elders which is about 16 at that time yeah, I would say around 16 15, yeah. 16 okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. strong enough to carry the tank oh yeah no okay. problem and yeah. then how old were they when they started to climb Oof, that they, they 
They, much earlier, right? Much because earlier, yeah, yeah, yeah. They just followed me basically. Okay, so yeah. you gotta you go a lot of Camp Five. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I Camp Five is because of work commitment basically. So okay. So you no, do stuff for them? Uh, normally, I I would just climb outdoors. Okay. Uh, yeah, in those days. So now, because of work commitment, and also because uh, there's uh, colleagues in office now who says that they want to climb a bit, so yeah, we just go off the world. Okay, so you show them the ropes line away. Kind right? of, kind of. Yeah. Okay, um, that's interesting for me because I, I want my kids to come out. Right? Yeah, I, yeah. I, every weekend, I do my best to get them off the device, get them out of the mall, let's not go to Mid Valley, yeah. let's go and do something, right? Yeah. As much as possible. Yeah. Forget about all these devices. Was there something that was in your mind as well? Uh, not consciously, it was just lifestyle, basically. Because you really do what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, so it was just like, hey, come, you know. It's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just lifestyle thing. Okay. Uh, not, not that they are not on devices, all of them got their you know, iPads. And, and also because the school in, in Australia does that, so all of them basically have iPads in the school. And so ah, good, I'm glad you brought that up. Okay, <laughs> so paying for this shit, right? Yeah. Paying for education, raising four children, you four of them, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. How do you do that? How, as a finance guy, right? And yeah. finance guys are the best at this. How do you find <laughs> it? <laughs> so, uh, around the time when they were just finishing uh, primary three or so, then I thought, oh shit, man, how am I going to educate four kids, right? I mean... You how old were you then? I can't remember how old, but yeah, basically old enough to, to have some sense. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, but... Sanitary, yeah? Yeah, they were in sanitary and yeah, I can't remember. So... Um, then we decided, look, you know, uh, one of the ways that probably nobody would tell you or tell you to do it, but I was thinking, hey, you know, we, we could all just migrate there, get PR and, and we to can Australia. Get, yeah, to Australia, the nearest. Right? So we, we cons because I, I worked in the States before and all that. So I did consider States, but it's like, shit, that's like 24 hours flight and no relative is going to come visit me because of the flight. You know, my parents or my in-laws are not going to come because, you know, it's, it's 24 hour flight for those poor old folks, right? So, yeah, yeah. no, 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 scrap that. UK, uh, didn't quite so like that. Cold. Yeah, yeah, so Australia, eight hours. Yeah, doable, you know. Were they Perth or Melbourne? Melbourne. Melbourne. Yeah, Perth would be ideal, same time Five zone. Five hours, right? Four and a half, yeah. Four and a half, yeah. Yeah. Good, yeah. So same time zone, you know, no worries about it. Then check it out. We check out a few places, uh, basically Brisbane, you know, Sydney, Okay, yeah, and Melbourne. Oh, yeah, and Melbourne's quite quite easy to settle into. So, so you went early enough to be qualified under the Australian government. Just about. Yeah. Just about. Just yeah. enough. Well, I I didn't have to do any government thing. I just, you know, get my uh thing evaluated and the experience all that. So it gets me a PR. Did you have to bring over money or investment things? Like no, that? no, no. Your mind was. Uh, I think at that time was a 145 visa, uh, so it's the highest level granted, so you're free to do anything. Basically. Okay, so yeah. you go there, you have to work, yeah? Contribute, pay taxes? Yeah, uh, work is, yeah. I mean, you, you can if you want, you, it's not forced on yeah. you to work, yeah. Yeah, so um, is that something that you advise the younger guys to do now? No, because what I would advise is think out of the box for all the options, right? Okay. Yeah, what works for me might not work for them, right? So, you know, I... They, they may not think that uh, Australian is an option, but yeah. what I'm saying is think out of the box. There could be more than one option to how to how to uh, educate your kids, preferably overseas, right? And most people do that. Uh, but think about it. Think about what you want for them, what they want for themselves. Uh, I had this long discussion with Tae Chi Chang. Um, Tae Chi Chang, former yeah. city group guy, yeah. uh, Hong DBS. Um, was former economic advisor to REFSA, yep. total REFSA, to, uh, to the DAP. And he and I basically had this discussion after quite a few whiskeys. <laughs> <also laughs> <on, on the laughs> <podcast. laughs> and then we came to the conclusion that if the children don't want to go to university or yeah. even to go abroad, there's a proposition because right now what you pay for university and what you get once you graduated mm. in terms of salary or even if you get hired. It's a loss making thing, right? It's a loss making thing. Yeah. And I think a lot of parents don't realize it. A lot of parents just go headlong into that whole equation thinking I must do the best for my children and doing the best for them means paying as much as I can for the best education you remember piano lessons right yeah every parent in Malaysia send their kids for piano lessons whether they they enjoy it or they don't you know yeah. so it's like that to me I felt that you know um, when my kids first started out so my eldest wasn't so academic right so what we do is that oh we realize she likes swimming so yeah she was just swimming every day, basically. Would you would you advocate a parents not sending their kids to university anymore? 
I was I would say that you equip them not to be a bum, basically. So to, to, to be the best that they can be in whatever they want to do. Yeah, uh, if they don't want to go to uni, right? What's the reason? What they want to do? It's not just I'm too lazy. I I can't accept that. Yeah. But if it's a uh, something that they've thought about, you know, they have a plan. I think yeah, why not? Okay, so your twenty-four-year-old boy, hmm. what's happening there? Is he in university? Is he finishing? My my daughter actually surprisingly graduated. Sorry, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, she wasn't academic, so okay. you know uh, that was a good thing. So uh, yeah, she she was more of the uh, well, she she's pretty laid back, I would say, yeah, yeah. even by Australian standards. So the approach to money and the approach to because we're all about the same age, right? Mm -hmm. And we're all about that age where we've got to pay for our children, pay for ourselves and our pursuits, yeah. and then our parents as well. Yeah. Because if if you don't come from a money background, chances are you have to look after them as well. So we are what they call in the fund management industry the sandwich generation, right? True. Sandwiched by the parents yeah, yeah. and their needs, and sandwiched by yeah, our children yeah. below us Middle and class their needs. Trap and all that, right? <laughs> That's right. So most people are stuck because they can't. They're having a hard time just trying to exist without even pursuing any of the personal um, wants. How, how are you doing it? What car are they driving to? They want to sell their car. Yeah. Are they willing to downgrade their lifestyle? Forget the Starbucks. Yeah, forget the Starbucks, right? Forget the 12 bucks coffee. Forget the uh, expensive uh, Japanese whiskey, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's sponsored. Unless it's Grand Liver. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> So what are your rules for financial um, um, advice? I think you would definitely, I think the best advice, uh, although it, it quotes Robert Kiyosaki, is that you, you, you make your money work harder than you, basically. Okay, so you invest? I do invest, yeah. Okay, what's your approach to investing? Uh, not to be greedy, not to, be, not to have unrealistic expectations. No so way. don't expect 15% returns a year? No way, right? I mean, right. if if you if you want that kind of investment, you probably will get scammed along the way. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think. Uh, so what you do? Are you are you an equity market guy? Are you a property I guy? I have some in funds. I have in property. So pretty much. Okay. So mm. what what kind of return expectations are you expecting? Uh, not so much in absolute uh, percentages, but. I would think that okay, this will grow to whatever amount I want in the future. Let's say one of my goals. I, I think uh, most of my friends would know is that I want a boat for my for my retirement. Okay. So instead of a house, I would say you know I. Oh, you wanted a boat. That's right. You told yeah, me before. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah, that's right. So, so you want to sail the world, right? I want to bring my house wherever I want to go, right? right. So instead of uh, you know buying landed property services and so. The, probably the same amount I would think have you bought the boat yet? no yet that's where uh, the chance meeting with Yusuf sort of came in right so I was I was having all these uh, thoughts about oh man I was looking at catamarans and all that and he basically told me dude there's there's a cheaper one there's, there's those boat builders in Sulawesi go check them out Sulawesi? yeah South Actually, Sulawesi Sulawesi is where um, Rizal went and ah, he spends a lot of time there right. he was in Palu when the earthquake happened ah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That's right. yeah. Oh, yeah no, then, after the earthquake happened yeah, yeah. and he organises a and all that's that right, kind of stuff that's yeah, right. yeah. cool guy yeah. cool guy cool guy yeah. okay so yeah, you're very um, contrarian in that respect probably yeah yeah. yeah. but I, I'm used to you know thinking about different options I guess uh, and then from work as well you know you, you have to probably change a bit of your of your boxing mindset I guess okay. yeah so you're a money guy because you work for a fund management industry yeah. uh, you're also a father yeah. and you also don't come from a rich background so what is your approach to retirement? I would think that uh, it's more like what you want to do, right? So, what so your retirement mm. is based on what your aspirations are once you retire. Yeah. Okay. So let's say I want to sail around, basically. The world? Probably, if I can afford it, yeah. But mm -hmm. if I can't, you know, just sail around the region. It's still sailing. Yeah. 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 So it's still seeing a bit of the world. Um, find out how you can finance that, those dreams. Okay, and do you have a number? Everybody's got a number, right? Everybody's got a number, but... Uh, what, what's your number? I wouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, in, in this sense, right? You, you, it's a bit too early to put a number in that, in that sense because what I find is that I would rather uh, reach the stage when I'm ready to set sail. And I think, okay, you know, let's have some experience. Let's have a gauge of how much I need. And then it'll be 
it will be a bit of a challenge to see, okay, how I meet this number, right? You may, you may then think, okay, maybe not full retirement, maybe, you know, I'll take up some project work, right? And uh, then work, um, work while you're traveling. Work while you're traveling or... Well, or the YouTubers do that now, right? They, exactly. Got, so, um, uh, you know, the crowdfunding thing going on. Correct. And, yeah. Correct. So, let's say you want to sail to, to I don't know, uh, uh, Greece, for example. It takes X amount of money, mm. okay? Look at your bank account. Nah, I'm not going to dig into that and yeah. how do I do it, right? So... That's that's the problem solving part that you know comes with your retirement rather than say that I'm gonna save and save and save and this amount then I go. I don't think that works for for me. I, I'm probably not gonna work for a lot of people. I would think. Yeah. I think it's more like the active involvement part that that. So it's a constantly moving target. I would think that. Uh, not constantly moving. I would think that a target upon that 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 point in time. Let's okay. say. Uh, you retired and you say, oh, next month I'm sailing to Greece. Uh, okay, do a bit of coverage, how much, how much that needs, right? So, yeah, okay, if I want to do that, uh, just how much I need, how do I get it? Yeah, so, so. okay. And then some people have the number, in terms of the age they want to retire, right? Some people say 50 years old. Some people say 55, right? Some people say yesterday, right? Um, it's a moving target. What, 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 what's your It's, it's a really a moving target. <laughs> uh, I think if you're enjoying what you're doing, don't don't put hard milestones as yeah. you say, you yeah. know. I think life is about experiencing and, and, and enjoying it, right? If you put a hard milestone, I must be married by thirty four. Shit, you're gonna be shit stress if you're not, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. What's the what the heck for, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's like, you know, I think that's a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, you may plan but you know, don't don't put that hard milestone in and you're like Shit, then I'm gonna marry regardless of whoever, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, and then compromise, right? Yeah, then compromise and say, oh no, you know, it doesn't work. So Do you think that today there's there's a proposition for you to be like kinda of like hybrid, retired? You know, I think like, so. like on YouTube, right? I, yeah, I follow yeah. quite a few um, yeah. creators and a lot of people they're they're, tra- they're traveling and they're on the road, but they're also con- creating content. I and, think so. And and the, the, the selling caps and t-shirt. Mm-hmm. Not that I'm going to do that, right? It's, it's almost like active retirement, isn't it? Yeah, you're, you're still yeah, yeah, doing yeah. something, financing some of your goals and yeah. all that. Yeah, why not? I would say what Yusuf does is his active retirement. He may say he retired from corporate work, but you know he does a bit of fundraising for his travels and all Photography, that. Photography, correct? He yeah. sells. I think he sells some of them correct. as well. Correct. Correct. So. You know, it's it's a creative way to fund your travels. Interesting the way mm. thing, the, the way things change. So, yeah. what what's your life advice? Having come to this point in time, I'm going to ask you for life advice on A, <laughs> investment B, um, staying healthy and staying fit. Yeah. Because you've got to stay fit. One of, one of Yusuf's things for uh, prerequisites for, for doing what he does is you have to have a healthy body, right? I think because so, Because yeah. if you've got a bad back or if you're like somehow done in, you can't, you can't go climbing, you can't go trekking. There's no way. So I, I think start early, right? I mean, you don't at 55... Then you decide, hey, you know, I'm going to get up from my couch and, and start to do some of these things at a hardcore level. No, you can't. Start early, right? you got, you got to... How early is early? As soon as... If you hear this podcast, go do it, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's not a day later than, than you know, from where you yeah, are today. now. Today. Yeah, yesterday, right? Yeah, correct. You know? Were you one of those kids that, like... You know, I was hyper, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That explains why I couldn't get uh, study yeah, yeah. down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so start early. Start early. Start early. You know, I mean, um, be with people who who thinks the same way. Be with people who challenge you, right? Uh, don't be with people that brings you down. You know, or, or you know, drag you to the particular lifestyle that you think, yeah, doesn't work. So no, I mean, always think of of uh, of uh, a what can I do better? You know, is there an alternative to if you feel yourself in, in, in a in a dull lifestyle, for example, yeah. yeah. Go go look at people who, who have a different lifestyle, you know. What uh, are some what are the, some of the things that you tell your children? Because they're big enough to realise what's what and yeah. what's not. The the biggest thing that I want to tell everyone, not just my children, is that don't be fearful, you know. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, yeah. Never be afraid. Of what? Of starting your own business or anything. Or or stepping trying? out. Everything is, 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 is governed by fear. You want to start a business? Your mental exactly, situation. Exactly, right? Yeah, right? yeah. You fear, like, like Helen Keller says, like fear exists only in your mind, you know? So yeah, because one of the biggest impediments to starting your own business 
it's the sh- it's just the fear of coming out and losing your, the security of your paycheck. Yeah, and and if you think about the grand scheme of things, right? I like I like to say that you know your 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 book is not finished, right? Every day, you haven't written the last chapter yet. So yeah, this this may be the sad chapter where you know you lost your 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 livelihood or whatever, right? But hey, the next chapter is where you bounce back, right? Yeah. So what's the fear? What was if if you put down in the perspective, right? In the grand scheme of things, your whole life, oh, a blip, doesn't have to define you, isn't it? Yeah, and sometimes the blip makes you come back stronger. Exactly, and I have heard so many stories about that. Yeah. Right? yeah. So what what is your definition of wealth, and uh, what are your investment tips to get that financial freedom? I I'm probably not very savvy in this sense because I I although I invest, but I do not. Uh, really strive for super normal prof, uh, uh, you know, returns and all that. I, I don't know if I can, but I would think that, you know, having a bit of security helps. Security in the, in the sense that, um, uh, you savings, know, your, right? yeah, you know, your, well, I, I don't believe in just pure cash savings. I, I believe in making my, my cash work. Okay, so, so it, it throws off income, yeah? yeah? Yeah, it throws off income. And then personally, I've been trying new things, right? I have a bit in crypto, I have a be in traditional investments. I have funding societies. Interesting. So, yeah. So you do peer to peer lending. And all I that? do peer to peer lending a bit, just yeah. to just to see, okay. and the, and the rates are not too bad. So so that this is a small percentage of your portfolio. Yeah. It's a high risk, high high. Correct. Yeah. Things, just right? don't be too afraid about it, right? Basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, just a little diversion. You're in the investment industry, and I think your firm is. If everybody's trying to attack the, um, try and penetrate the younger market, mm-hmm. right? What is your reading of where the the young millennial mind is when it comes to investments? I think the young millennial mind is one whereby they trust the uh, social network more yeah, than, really? they, than they trust uh, uh, older people telling them. So it's almost like a, f- to me, I felt anyway, it's almost like a generational rebellion thing. Okay. So they are rejecting the the wisdom of the tried and tested experience guys. Yeah. They're going for the feedback loop yeah. on the um, social media networks. Yeah. Rightly or wrongly. Uh, rightly or wrongly. I, I think if if you see the the growth of influencers, for example, I think that points to something, right? The the reason why influencers have, have managed to grow that way and so on and so forth. So Are you what, what and what's your feedback to that? I I think I think it's been hijacked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to me the the growth of influencers has been hijacked and and you know there's uh, to me now it's probably not so real anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, what is the definition of of wealth to you? I think something that enables you to maybe in a selfish way uh pursue the things that you want without uh uh endangering the lifestyle of your family, for example. Okay. So having to already having already set aside something for your family, yeah. then only you can do something for yourself. Yeah. Or in the midst of doing something for yourself, no not to say that it has to be one before the other, but you know, have a plan that uh whatever it is, they, they should not be too disrupted about your activities basically. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, if you were to advise the 31-year-old Alan Wu hmm. 20 years ago, just say hypothetically 20 years ago, right? Yeah. What would you tell him? Basically, it's still one word if I would say, just go for it. Don't be fearful, you know. Try afraid, everything. Right? Yeah, try everything. Just believe in the universe. Is that as simple as that? I would think so. I think if you are able to define your life in a, in a, in a simple sentence, right, you have more opportunity to or you have more liberty than to, you know, go yeah. out. Yeah. You're yeah. not shackled by, by boundaries that you put on yourself. I must be earning this amount before I can buy my bike and go and ride. For Just example. do it anyway, right? Just do it anyway, right? It doesn't have to be a BMW GS. It can doesn't. be like, you know, I, I, I actually read about this bunch of old yeah. guys. Uh, BK Lim, um, he used to be a BMW salesman yeah. in Penang. Uh, and he did this trip from Penang um, called Downing to Downing, right? <laughs> Uh, Downing Street in Penang to yeah. Downing Street in London, right? Yeah. I think eight guys. Uh, the youngest guy was in his early 60s, I think yeah. 64, 63. <laughs> yeah. And he was already 69 or something. Yeah. And they rode uh, Cup Chais. Right. Right? 
and because cup why not right easy, <laughs> yeah cheap to maintain yeah, yeah. reliable yeah and I think one of them tragically died in India. Okay. But they all made it. Yeah. I think a couple of them also dropped out. I think the guy who died probably died happy, right? He died happy, right? <laughs> yeah. Because, right? Yeah. He was on the bucket list. Yeah. So I think actually anything. So I'm trying to get Bikhelim to come on the podcast. Oh, well, right. So that would be so I cool to, 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 to hear some cool, of these right? people. That the way the mindset is, right? Yeah. I think today what we're dealing with is, is too many people telling, or rather we are influenced by a certain mindset that, you know, if, if I have the opportunity to tell people, look, you know, forget about those things, you know. Yeah. yeah. What is not important? What is not important is the, the new car. I mean, buying a new car is like buying a, it's like smoking a cigarette, right? It's, you're just burning money. Yeah. You buy the, the, the car, but then it comes out of the showroom, you already lost 20%. Yeah. And if you're a money guy, that's like, that's... Yeah. Why would you do that? Why yeah. would you just burn money? Why would you, right? I mean, you save that money, probably just go on a trip I mean yeah. if, if you're a trip you're a tour guy just go on a trip I mean why not keep your life yeah. happier right so what, what trips have you got planned coming up what is, what's, I, on the, what's on the bucket list I next year I plan to do Patagonia okay so nice. that's that's my bucket list yeah so haven't really planned the route there but it probably involves Patagonia is Argentina right Chile Argentina Chile Argentina yeah that's yeah. gonna be huge that's gonna be huge. That's gonna be huge, also money wise. Yeah, that's why it's like uh, probably twenty thousand ringgit or so. Wow. Um, probably. More. Yeah, but the depends, flight alone is twenty thousand. Yeah, it depends on how we can string it along and and so on and so forth. So, uh, it takes a bit of planning. It takes a bit of planning in the financial sense, right? As well, you know, think of how you want to get that money. Uh, either invest more or save more. Save is harder, but invest. Save is harder. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. So. Top yeah. line growth is always challenging, <laughs> <laughs> especially this day and age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and where's the wife and all this? Is she is she amenable? Uh no. Wife was n- not a person that that is uh, uh, have any interest in this outdoor. So, okay. <laughs> but understanding the kind of yeah, <laughs> understanding the kind of person I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's interesting. Okay, so Patagonia number two, number three. Uh, if I get my boat, it's probably learning to sail a bit, uh, and then probably, if I get a chance, would be, yeah, somewhere in Un- Antarctica. Probably just yeah. to see it, yeah. yeah. And would you go solo or with other people? No, it's probably with friends. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I think f- friends are what makes the journey crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I am not sure whether you've seen this on Netflix, but yeah. uh, this is Swedish uh, guy. I think he's an architect. I think I've seen that, that show. One, he right? did the uh, crossing, right? That's right. With his um, friends on a small Canada, right? Yeah, yeah. Tiny boat. Yeah, tiny, I saw tiny, that. Tiny meaning 30, 30, 40 correct, feet. Correct, correct. Yeah. Not a small boat, but yeah, small. Yeah, the coral on board and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because only one of them is an experienced sailor. The other two correct. wasn't. The other yeah. two are like, uh, one's an architect, the other one's an engineer, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure what I would do with people because in closed space, even though they're your friends of 30 years, whatever years you'll I, fight I, I think the the healthy thing is realize that you would fight I mean you, if you think about it right fighting with friends and you would fight with your spouse come on that's right yeah, right that's so right. fighting with life. friends is like a given right <laughs> 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 you okay know. so number one number yeah. one is category number yeah. two is um, probably sailing a bit I don't know I bit, hope yeah. to do the Antarctica thing yeah. once I'm more experienced but I haven't got a number three yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Each day as it comes, right? Each day as it comes. Yeah. I mean, you, to me, uh, then you know, in between is all these micro adventures and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Doing, w- getting what we can, where we can, how where we, we can. can yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It's it's like uh, a lot of people say they all planning and saving up for the big one, but I always challenge that. Why? You know. Yeah. Just do small ones. Just do small ones. <laughs> do you aim to do like a minimum number a year? Or? No, no. I I think those kind like. I believe all these kind of planning milestones or rather hard milestones, let's not call it planning milestones. Those these hard milestones that you set for yourself, it's actually like a baggage. So I, I try to not put too much baggage on myself. Too much pressure. Yeah, right? too Forget much pressure. It, yeah. yeah, Forget it, man. <laughs> yeah. Life lessons for the young. Life lessons for the aged as well. Because uh, yeah, you can still do it. Age, you can still do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, man. All right, man. The rookie. Thank nice you talking to much. you. <laughs> Thanks for the whiskey. Thank <laughs> Thanks, Candy. <Cheers>. <laughs>